Hello, I would like to present to you our paper using Echo Burke and the Historical Thesaurus of English to explore concept and agency in historical writing. On behalf of me and my co-authors who are listed on this title slide. This paper introduces a new method to determine meanings in historical texts. It relies on a context-aware language model using transformer architecture. As a case study, we use the method to understand more about the 18th century luxury debate. Firstly, to give some historical background and context, in the 18th century, the growth and acceptance of commercial society and an increase in the availability of luxury goods from overseas meant that the dominant discourse shifted from seeing luxury as a corrupt force to something more complex. Using this new method, we focus on two very specific meanings of luxury and their change over time. Firstly, luxury as a disease or something disease-like. And secondly, luxury as something productive or enabling productivity. The results show that the average value of luxury in this latter category increased over the century, suggesting a change in the way authors wrote about the concept in our corpus. This method builds on extensive related work. It builds primarily on existing computational approaches to understanding meaning in, in texts, but updates them with the use of a trained from scratch word to transform the model. Many existing approaches to semantic representations focus on the distributional hypothesis, using tools such as word to vec to compare the context and distributions of words to determine semantic similarities, such as de Bolle, the work done by de Bolle et al. However, these general models have been criticized for lacking the specificity needed by historians. Particularly relevant to this paper is the work done to disambiguate word senses to a, high, a set of higher level classical categories, usually derived from large semantic dictionaries, such as the work done by Kiermit et al., Xiao et al., and Robinson et al. Bert's transformer models have also previously been used to detect shifts in historical language meaning. This paper primarily uses two resources. The Echobert language model created by the Turku NLP group, and the, secondly, the Historical Thesaurus of English, or HTE. Echobert is a dedicated BERT model trained from scratch on a large collection of mostly English language texts called 18th Century Collections Online. The second resource, the Thesaurus, is a thesaurus compiled over four decades by experts, derived from the Oxford English Dictionary. It has a detailed semantic structure, meaning each word in the thesaurus is contained within a hierarchical set of categories, each representing a more fine-grained group of connected words. Each word in the thesaurus is also assigned a first and last state of known uses, usage. So the HTE has, has a hierarchical structure. Each lemma is a leaf at the end of a tree. And the, and the branches are more and more fine-grained semantic categories. Lemmas can also be included under more than one category. And as I mentioned, each word has a first and la last date of known usage. As an example, this is a page from the web user interface of the historical thesaurus. We can see that the category disease um, is represented by a large number of words. Um, and it is also found within a larger, higher, a higher level category, ill health, which itself is found within a higher level category, health and disease, which itself is found in a root category, the world, of which there are three. And so our method combines the information in the HTE which essentially represents a huge number of recorded meanings done by domain experts with the concept text sensitive language model 
to help understand meanings in a particular context. And we do this to generate semantic cavities for any given utterance of a word. It's important to note it's not a classifier, so our aim is also to find non-standard or secondary senses, nor is it trying to capture sentiment directly, but rather the semantic categories under which a particular word falls in a, in a given context. We, um, we use the assumption that a semantic category can be represented by the words found within it. So the concept of ill health, for example, might be represented by the words sickness, plague, ailment, and so forth. The proposed method extracts senses from the representations of words as found in Echo Birth, using references and connections from the, the source. So to quickly sum up the method, we remove a seed word of interest, generate the most likely replacement using a birth model, and then derive a category score for each category in the thesaurus by comparing the birth replacements to the words or lemmas in the historical thesaurus. As a simplified dummy example, take the following sentence. On seeing any extraordinary display of the means of luxury and magnificence, he used to facilit felicitate himself that he had no occasion for such articles and would explain, of how many things stand I in no need. In order to determine the semantic categories for this instance, this utterance of the word luxury, we delete the word luxury and ask Echobert to predict the most likely word in, in, the, in the missing spot. So imagine the result were the following words, plus confidence or probability scores. Wealth, riches, extravagance, pomp, and corruption. Now imagine we had a dictionary which just had two categories. The first category is the world, health and disease, ill health. And this is represented by the lemmas sick, disease, illness, and corruption. And the second category is the world relative properties, quantity, sufficient quantity. And this is represented by the words full, wealth, riches, and satisfied. To get the score for category one, we take the sum of the probabilities for all of the predicted words which are also found in that category. In this case, for category one, it's just one word, uh, corruption, with a low score, so the total score is 0 0.05. Whereas for the second category, there are two words, both with high scores. Uh, and summing those gives us a category score of 0.7. So as a preliminary study, this method was applied to each instance of a single word from the ECHO data set, luxury. Luxury in the 18th century, wrote Berg and Ager, gradually lost its former associations with corruption and vice, and came to include production, trade, and the civilizing impact of superfluous commodities. This acts as a good uh, case study and tracing the key semantic categories for instances of the word luxury allows us to better understand this changing attitude over time. Using the method, we extracted category scores for all instances of the word luxury in the ECHO dataset. In many cases, the method was able to derive sensible and meaningful semantic categories for these words. This is most apparent in the aggregate seen in the results from the top 10 below. So the, the top 10 categories, semantic categories for the word luxury include um, sensuous pleasure, ostentation, usefulness, pastimes, quality of being good, and etc. etc. Of particular relevance are two from this top 10 list. First, the world action or operation advantage usefulness, and second, world health and disease, ill health and disease. These two categories are good proxies for the two dominant and opposing views of luxury. Something first as something corrupting and responsible for moral decline, 
and second, something productive and potentially useful. On the, in, in the following page, we will show examples of high scoring instances. First, take these two examples uh, from 18th century texts. The, the example on the left uh, is an example of a high scoring instances with category usefulness. This is taken from a letter by Oliver Goldsmith, who famously wrote extensively on the upsides of luxury. Goldsmith writes, the natural consequences of security and affluence in any country is a love of pleasure. When the wants of nature are supplied, we seek after the conveniencies. When possessed of these, we desire the luxuries of life. And when every luxury is provided, it is then ambition takes up the man and leaves him still something to wish for. The, uh, the example on the right is taken from a history called Beauties of Histories, uh, and particularly taken from a section devoted to luxury and its ills. Um, this, the author writes, but alas, it was not long ere Cyrus himself sowed the first seeds of that luxury which soon overspread and corrupted the whole nation. So we can see here two very clearly different views and attitudes towards the word luxury. To understand more about how these views of luxury changed over time, we graph the average value of each for each year of the century. And while the data is noisy, it in general points to a flat average use for luxury in the category disease, and at the same time, towards the second half of the century, an increase in the, the usefulness category, suggesting, um, as we have seen from the existing historical literature, a change in the attitude, or at least an increase in the attitude of seeing luxury as something that could have potential use and might drive industry or productivity. We can also look at the average scores from the point of view of individual authors. These box plots um, visualize the average scores for 10, for the, 10 the top 10 categories for four different authors. And we can see some differences in between them. So overall, this supports the idea of a less negative view of luxury over time and a shift towards a specific semantic meaning of productivity and usefulness. The, this is an interesting finding and shows that there's a real statistical background to the idea the prevailing view of luxury, and um, that the prevailing view of luxury became less negative over time. In conclusion, this paper proposes a method for determining layered meanings in a historically aware manner using large language models and a widely used semantic classification system. The proposed method is applied to the word luxury, as found in a data set of over 30 million pages of early modern English to trace the evolution in its meaning over time and the differences in use between authors. This combination of the statistical context-aware transformer model and the expert semantic resource of the historical resource of English shows great promise and in future work we aim to use the method over a wide range of concepts and semantically varying terms. Thank you very much for listening. We look forward to hearing your questions.